All right, guys, Adam Trigger back with another college basketball preview. Today we're talking West Virginia, and I'm bringing my friend Nick Greeley in. Nick, welcome in. Appreciate you taking the time to join here. And um, just tell the viewers, if they're, they're unfamiliar with you, uh, what Psychic Hoops is and where they can find you guys. Yeah, well, appreciate you having me on today, Trigger, to talk about the Mountaineers. You know, that's my team. So I'm happy. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to get into it. Um, yeah, you guys can follow me on Nick Grills on, on X. And uh, the company I work for and do stuff with right now is Psychic Hoops. And we're just doing a ton of preaching the content, bringing in beat writers and stuff, breaking down every single team for the Power Five. So we'll be doing that up until uh, day one of the season. Yeah, you guys are doing fantastic work. The previews are great. So I, I urge you to check that out as you prepare for college hoops. Um, so my previews are a little bit different. Uh, I go through 30 teams, all of which I've, I saw play in some capacity last year, most of which I, I've you know been to their campus to see in person. Uh, it gives me some continuity going last year into this year with my handicapping. But one where we're just going to throw the word continuity out the window is West Virginia because this team – does not look like last year's team at all. So I guess I'm going to start with, you know, my just general thought on on how to to, to make sense of, of betting this team. My concern, and I have more concerns than, I guess it's mostly concerns for me. Uh, my concern is they don't have enough Big 12 athletes on the team. Uh, just looking at the roster, uh, I don't know how many of these guys translate into playing into the Big 12. Now, on the flip side, Nick, I like some I, sometimes I like to bet on these teams that are like coming off of terrible seasons that have no expectations because of where the market might price them. So we'll start here. Talk to me about the head coaching hire in DeVries and how much you think he matters to the number in making this team competitive sooner than later. Yeah, hiring DeVries is honestly probably one of the best hires of the coaching cycle, I'd have to say. And the main thing is, like, this was a quiet offseason. Last season, there was so much just hectic nonsense week after week after week, just Bob Huggins and, and everything else. Like, they actually got really good, talented players, but, you know, it just didn't matter when you don't have a head coach, especially in the Big 12, man. But, yeah, the Vries, like, 59 and 17 in NBC, it's 77% um, win percentage. Like, the guy wins. And you, and you look at, like, what he's done, like, how he built Drake up. Because like, Drake was nobody. And it just was dominating the margins. The guy in the second defense last season, rebounding, turnover percent was top 15. And that's what you want when you're backing an underdog, especially like off a bad season like last year. And I think there's going to be some good spots to back this team early in non-con. Yeah, I mean, you look at the roster, totally different roster from last year. Obviously, Tucker DeVries is kind of like the household name. Well, for a college hoop fan, tremendous at Drake, one of the top scorers in the country. Um, from a points per game standpoint, probably one of the, I, I would say it's reasonable to say he was one of the better scorers in all of college basketball last year, like regardless of, of level. Uh, he comes over with his dad. So no no question, like that's probably where you start with with a little bit of, you know, bringing the, the Drake component over. Uh, I look up and down this roster and I see a lot of players that come from programs that, that didn't win. Okay, like you, you bring in, Stone from Detroit, they had a terrible season. J Javon Small from Oklahoma State, they weren't very good. Uh, Okani from UIC, not very good, right? The team wasn't very good. He had a pretty good year. Uh, Andre from Fresno State, again, how does DeVries take these guys who come from, from underwhelming programs and, and make this team a, a winner this year? Is it even possible? Is, is that kind of upside there with this team? Let alone, like, in the Big 12, let alone going to Atlantis. Like, these were guys who were losing at, at the lower levels. And I'm a big, like, I like winning culture guys. They're just different. Um, the, the, the one thing that I will fight back with that is, like, DeVries is a winner. And the best player on the team, Tucker, I mean, if they can stack enough Ws in the Big 12, he's probably a first-team Big 12 player. Like, this guy's All-American good. He's an NBA player, in my opinion. So, I mean, when you have the head coach and the best player – have been around for a while as, as your leaders, you know, you can win some games and cover some numbers. So, yeah. Nick, I'll bring up one name here that I, that I haven't touched on yet. And it's Joseph Yasufu. Um, he comes over from Washington state, but really he's, he's coming from Drake a couple of years ago. He, he went off and did his thing in the portal, ended up at Kansas, ended up at Washington state, but now he, you know, reunites with DeVries. You know, you look at him on paper, 
he doesn't exactly jump off the page based on what he's done the last couple of years. You know, last year, I think, battled some injuries, uh, six points per game, wasn't fully in the mix for Washington State. The same could be said at Kansas. Do you think, you know, it, what, what do you see him bringing to this team? Because he was awesome on those straight teams a couple of years ago. He was the X factor for those Drake teams back when he was there. Now, he goes to Kansas, barely plays. He gets a ring with them. So, I mean, that's good. But, again, he, he could barely crack the rotation besides a few games at Kansas. And then he bounces back to Washington State. He kind of starts the season off well, and then he gets injured again. So, I mean, I think it's really good because the Reeds wasn't able to bring any other Drake players back, like over 10 or any of those other guys who transferred to good school. So, it's, it's good to at least – get another Drake player back alongside Tucker. And I honestly think, yes, Fu will be featured as like a sixth man off the bench, maybe, you know, come in, change the pace on because he's a quick, he's a quick, crafty, shifty guard. Um, but, yeah, I can't see him cracking the starting lineup. But I do think that we will see yes, who's best this season. All right, so I, got, I watched your guys' preview on West Virginia, which was great, by the way. And I, I'm going to ask you about two guys that, you know, come over together from Illinois – I believe with a coach. I think it was it was those two and a coach. Yep. Uh, it's going to be sincere Harris who didn't step on the floor or didn't. I don't think he played at all last year. Uh, yeah, sure. And then Amani Hansberry who say again, yeah, no, uh, and, and then yeah, Amani Hansberry redshirted last year, and then Hansberry who who kind of played sparingly on that Illinois team. This is something like I'll defer to you here because you know I, how do you see those two kind of like meshing in, you know, into DeVries' system. And again, I'm looking for upside with this West Virginia team because I, I think I'm going to want to bet on them. The reason I say that, this is a betting preview, we know that they're probably going to be priced at the bottom of the market. They had a terrible, te- a terrible season last year. It's almost all new. The books tend to like really price these teams unless there's like a ton of name recognition with the, with the name on the front of the jersey, which I don't really think there is here because West Virginia, like they haven't been been great recently, you know, Convince me that that this team could be like a team that I want to play on. And how do those two Illinois transfers, you know, get in the mix there? Right. Well, you really need Amani Hansberry. I mean, 6'8", bigger frame, tough guy, comes over from Illinois. He can score in the post. He, he came over with Sincere Harris, like you mentioned, in the package deal with Adam Frazier, the new assistant coach. Um, Eduardo Andre is what he is. He's a, uh, he's a rim runner, block shots. Uh, I, I don't think he can score in the post. That's why you need – that element and, and another level down low. And, and that's where hands right fits in. Like he's going to be crucial. And I think that he's a bit under the radar right now. And I think he's going to turn some heads at a national level, not just for West Virginia fans. Um, so say here is junk, junkyard dog. He can guard anybody. He wants to pressure you full court. Um, some comparisons that are being made by my buddy Ethan was Javon Carter esque defensively, not offensively yet. Um, but yeah, he used last season just to pressure get better offensively. Um, his role is still up in the air, but I think he's going to play crucial minutes off the bench alongside Yesifu. Yeah, you know, sometimes it's a, a change of scenery can really do someone good. Like we talked we talked very briefly about Javon Small. You know, he's played in this conference before, and I think that's important when you're putting together a team of, of guys that all came from different programs last year for the most part. I, I think there's maybe one guy on this roster that was actually like played like played on this team last year. Um, do you know, do you think DeVries small is that a better situation for him than than what he had in Oklahoma State last year? I would certainly say that, especially especially with Boynton getting fired and leaving Oklahoma State. I mean, they were the bottom of the Big Twelve, and Javon Small was the bright spot. Like he was the one player you turned on the game and it was like, okay, this guy's consistent. You know, we're gonna get, and he's gonna have to be huge for West Virginia. And I think he's going to be really good as a combo guard alongside Tucker. I think they'll be able to play, play, play off each other, both average double digits. And they're both old players, man, which is like why I think when they got to the last, you know, they're not going to beat Gonzaga. They're probably not going to win the second game versus Indiana or Louisville. But I don't think they're going to get blown out either. And I think it's because those two guys are having really big games and they're controlling the game for West Virginia. All right, that's where I want to finish, is schedule talk. You alluded to it, the Atlantis tournament. We're sports better, so we're trying to figure out where we can bet on these teams, where to fade them. And, you know, I, I probably could only back them in Atlantis because I feel like they're going to be a, a substantial underdog uh, against the teams that they're going to play out there. 
I don't know that I, you know, kind of want to go at them kind of laying a ton of points on a neutral court. You know, these these MTE tournaments can be tricky in that regard. But interestingly enough, they they open the they open the season with some games that I wouldn't be surprised if they were a little bit undervalued. And I guess maybe you're going to have to draw conclusions from that opener against Robert Morris. But, you know, UMass carries a little bit of weight. I don't know that they're great this year. Interesting trip to Pitt that's kind of a rivalry game where they go on the road to a decent Pitt team. Iona gets some respect, typically, for a mid-major. They're coming to Morgantown. So the more I look at the schedule, I guess I see myself either on West Virginia or passing more than I'm trying to fade them just because of where I think the market is going to have them placed. Is that kind of how you're approaching your, your betting to them, or are you seeing something differently? Absolutely, Adam. I mean, from a pure market standpoint, I'm not really looking to fade West Virginia because we're both in agreement there that the market is a little low on West Virginia. Now, I will say I, I try to avoid teams like West Virginia early on just because, I mean, like you said, they're only returning one guy. Continuity could definitely be an issue here. I know they went out to Italy this, over the summer and played a few games, but, I mean, you can't put a lot into that. But like you had mentioned the schedule, like, I'm not so much interested in Robert Morris, UMass, Iona, those games early on. Um, I will say, though, when you when you get into December some with, like, North Carolina Central, with Hume Cookman, Mercyhurst, like, that's a good three-game stretch where I do trust them to cover a bigger number. I've had a month to play together, so I trust them a little bit more to, you know, cover those numbers, especially when they're probably going to exit Atlantis one and two at best. Um, that's straight up. So I think you'll get even better numbers on those games. I think it's really hard – preseason to judge the first few games the pit game really interests me i have that line at like seven or eight obviously that can change by then that's the third game of the season but i think that's a good spot and that's where we'll, we'll see them at their best as a dog um so yeah i'm excited to back them for that game and and, and i'll be looking to back them in Atlanta too again probably close to double digits in a few games yeah more i look at it the more i see more chances probably to play on them and and let's just say they go to the bahamas and really take it on the chin in that tournament, which is very possible. You see some of the names in that field, you know, coming home a week later against a team like Georgetown, if they're super undervalued coming into that Georgetown game at home, that might be a, a nice spot to, to look at them as well. Nick, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Um, check out psychic hoops. They have a great preview on West Virginia, a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, Nick Christian and, and do a great job and, and you, you should absolutely check out their stuff. Uh, on Twitter, on YouTube, all the places that they post content. You can find me at Wager Talk, Adam Trigger, WT on all platforms. I've got a great uh, coupon, Trig CBB, T R I G CBB, for a huge discount on my regular season. There's my link, wt.buzz slash AT. And then head on over to the Wager Talk YouTube channel, like and subscribe, and check out our playlist where we'll have all of these previews in one easy to locate and watch place. Until next time, Adam Trigger, Wager Talk. We'll talk to you guys soon.